Welcome to Fox Hills Black Report, your daily source for black news, views, and opinions. Today is Monday, July 25th, and I'm Mimi Brown. And I'm Romeo. I'm Demi Lobo. And on today's report, a Seattle man is being accused of threatening to kill black people in Buffalo. New details emerge on a strange line of questioning he asked during a phone call. We have that story. Meanwhile, just as the new mental health hotline has launched, health counselors begin to worry about how black Americans will react to the new number. Will it be a trusted source for moments in need. Then a police chief in Mississippi is out of a job after audio catches him bragging about killing people in the line of duty. Does the police chief admit to his wrongdoing? We're gonna break it all down. Plus Jordan Peele's movie Nope has a strong opening at the box office. We'll hit you with those numbers. And Little Baby speaks out on rumors of RICO charges against him. We have all of that and so much more to see as our voice and our truth. So let's get it. man is accused of threatening to kill black people at another grocery store in Buffalo. Prosecutors say Joey David Gregory made a call to Topps Friendly Market last week. Now, this is a different grocery store from the one that was attacked in May, but police say he threatened a copycat shooting like the one in Buffalo that took the lives of 10 people in a majority black neighborhood. Investigators say George called the store asking how many black people were there. In that call, he reportedly said that he would be featured on the news if he shot and killed all of the black people, including children and babies. Now, this guy has a history of this. Uh, he made racist threats to establishments mm -hmm. before. Uh, he made one to a bakery in San Bruno, California, uh, where he threatened to shoot black and Latino shoppers if the store wasn't closed in 20 minutes. He also called black people subhuman. Um, he says that his motive in the Bay Area was to install fear in black people who lived in that area. And he also called a, a, mon a marijuana dispensary in Rockville, Maryland, and a Denny's in Connecticut um, doing the same thing. So my question, though, is if we knew all of this, why are we just now arresting him for mm. this one? Mm -hmm. Sounds like he's been doing this for a while. He's been instilling terror in many communities. Um, and so maybe now because of what happened in Buffalo, they took him more seriously mm -hmm. because they didn't want another copycat. But still, he's been terrorizing people uh, for a, quite a few uh, months to years, and no one has arrested him until now. I absolutely agree with you, Mimi. You know, it takes uh, someone it being in your backyard, it kind of seems like, well, this is going to be taken seriously. And so you have people like this. We've seen this in so many different situations where you have these uh, white people, white men who terrorize our neighborhoods and nothing happens until one day it kind of clicks like, whoa, this might be a, a national situation. This might be a problem for people in our community. And I'm with you that what is it going to take when someone does something the first time? Uh, what is the, uh, the saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks? When someone shows you exactly who they who, are, who they are yeah. you need to believe them on the first time. And uh, I'm with you that this is just very scary that it took this long for this man to have any charges. Yeah, this brings up a, a huge alarm, if you ask me, because how many more calls have they gotten like mm -hmm. this that they haven't responded to as of yet? Mm -hmm. We know a lot of things have been happening lately with the, what happened in Uvalde, what happened in Buffalo, New York, but they need to be more on top of it. If they're short staff, they need to go ahead and make sure that staff is strengthened, make sure it's more numbers, because the more calls come in like that, we have to get in front of it. Otherwise, we'll lose more lives. Yeah. Another point that I have to add here, too, you think about uh, how victims of different shootings, mass shootings, we look at Jalen Walker, how he lost his life, but we talk about the Buffalo shooter walk away still alive, yeah. still alive. So, I mean, if I were to get into the mind, sometimes you have to get into the mind of these people. If I'm in the mind of the person who was able to walk away alive after killing people at Tops in Buffalo, why would I fear? I'm going to be on the news. My yeah. name is going to be national be headlines. Glorified, glorified by people. Glorified, yeah. right? You see, 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 so you can kind of think about why would I feel any fear nothing happened to that man that is a really yeah. good point people uh people really don't uh think about it like that so that's a really good point because you he he got away mm -hmm. yeah. in essence whereas someone who well we'll talk about this later mm -hmm. who uh does a minor traffic stop is beat in his own home Absolutely. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we have to uh, look at it like that Jimmy. Mm -hmm. that's a really yeah. good point getting yeah. into the mind of these yeah. of these yeah. people uh, hours after being found guilty of contempt of congress steve bannett says he's willing to go to jail for donald trump bannett was convicted friday of two counts of contempt after he refused to comply with the House January 6th committee. Each count carries one year in prison and $100,000 of a fine. In the closing argument, the, the prosecutor missed one very important phrase, right? I stand with Trump 
and the Constitution. And I will never back off that, ever. Mm. Bannon says he will appeal his conviction sentencing. It is scheduled for October. In an attempt to help Americans dealing with mental health emergencies, a new 988 phone system is being established. The, nation's, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline works like 911, but it will be staffed with mental health counselors instead of police, firefighters, or paramedics. The federal government is giving $280 million to states to set up the system, but African-American mental health experts are worried black people may be leery of using the system. Some African-Americans suffering from a mental health crisis have been the victims of police assaults or killings after 911 was called. Police reform activists have been pushing for police departments to hire people with with mental health expertise to deal with situations that cops are not equipped to handle. And this is true. I mean, we think about what people of color have gone through by simply trying to call 911 because a loved one or someone in their community may have a mental illness and it ends up very, very bad. They get abused, they may get killed. Now we do know one thing when it comes to psychiatric um, places like that, more people with mental issues are locked up in jail than they are in hospitals. There are more jails that, that provide for them. So what is that saying when they're back on the streets? What help are they getting when that situation happens as well? So what do we do to fix it? Do we have trust as black people in this 988 number? You know, that's a really good point, uh, uh, Romeo. There are more jails we know than hospitals, mm -hmm. right? So black people already have a mistrust in the system. And so sometimes when you say just call 988, it depends on who's on the other side of that line. Exactly. And I think a lot of times what we need to, what they need to invest in with that that $280 million sensitivity training, uh, hire black people or people who um, are sensitive to the needs of the black community. And I think that will also go a long way because we already have a very big mistrust of how things run. Mm, absolutely. Uh, when we talked about this 988 number, I forgot who it was, someone on our production team, we were trying to figure out, is it a suicide number or it is a mental health number? I think that also to the uh, positioning of what this number is needs to be a little bit more clear because then you'll know, I'm gonna regurgitate something that I said before when we first talked about this is when you're in a line of, when you're afraid, right? And the first thing that you're going to do is think of 911. You're not going to, if you're, if you're on the side of like where someone you feel like someone is trying to attack you that's having a mental health crisis, but you're the one you feel like your life is in danger, you're naturally going to dial 911. You're not thinking about 988. Right. So it needs to be um, more clear what this number is for, what situations are you going to use this number for, and what do you get as a result of calling this number. And so mm -hmm. those health counselors that are n nervous, they'll be able to say, you know, we, we're not nervous anymore because black people know know what we need to use this number and for. And it's important to know the reaction time. When you dial this number, mm -hmm. what's, what's the time frame going to be before someone comes to help yes, you too? Absolutely. All right. The Congressional Black Caucus wants to meet with a head of Sesame Place, the Sesame Street themed amusement park. The meeting was requested after a viral video showed a costumed character ignoring two little black girls. Caucus chair Joyce Beatty wants she wants to meet with the president of the amusement park to discuss changes the park will make to address the incident. Now, since the release of the initial video, more parents have come forward with videos of their children being snubbed by the park's characters. Sesame Place officials say they have offered to meet with the family and their attorney to offer a personal apology. Embattled mm -hmm. state attorney Marilyn Mosby is coming to the end of her time as Baltimore's top prosecutor. She lost the Democratic primary to Ivan Bates, a defense lawyer. Mosby became national news when she prosecuted the officers involved in the Freddie Gray death. That sparked days of uprisings in Baltimore back in 2015. The officers were acquitted. Supporters of Mosby say that her political enemies went after her. She was indicted on charges that she purged herself to obtain money from a retirement fund and made false statements to loan applications just to buy vacation homes in Florida. A civil rights advocate and former president of the North Carolina NAACP has died. A Reverend T. Anthony Spearman was found dead in his home on Tuesday. The cause of death is unknown. His death comes five months after he was suspended from the NAACP by the National Leadership Group uh, after he refused to turn over records. The 71-year-old had also served as the president of the North Carolina Council of Churches. Local civil rights leaders say Spearman was in the mode of Dr. King.
And two University of Houston volleyball players who were seen on social media making fun of the 1935 lynching of two black teens are back on the team. Grad student Abby Jackson and her, her senior friend Isabel Thewitt were reinstated to the team. Another player, Raleigh Whitekettle, who recorded the incident, has left the team. Now, Whitekettle recorded her teammates and uploaded the video to Snapchat in March. The caption of the video said, this is the hanging tree where we used to hang people. Now, back in 1935, a mob of white people lynched 15-year-old Ernest Collins and 16-year-old Benny Mitchell in Columbus, Texas. The boys were accused of killing a white woman. They never made it to trial. They were kidnapped by the mob as they were being transported to court. Black students at the university are upset that the players have been allowed back on the team. Mm -hmm. Houston police are trying to find out who left racist notes and slashed the tires on a car of a black family living in a predominantly white neighborhood. The renter says she started receiving death threats within a week of her moving to the Woodland Hills Village community with her roommate and 12 year old daughter. The woman says not long after the notes were discovered, she spotted four men near her SUV in the driveway. That's when she found out her tires were also slashed. The woman's landlord has installed security cameras around the home. The police chief of a small Mississippi police department is out of a job after audio tape of him bragging about killing 13 people in the line of duty was released. Sam Dobbins was secretly recorded by Robert Lee Hooker, a black cop, who discovered how bad the department was shortly after. Joining the, the recording was also made public by Mississippi Center for Investigative Reporting. When asked about the recording, Robbins denied using slurs, saying he did not talk like that. After the recording was released, the town's board of aldermen fired Robbins. Uh, this is just a situation that we know exists. We know it's out there and it's so unfortunate. And, you know, this is a good situation where he was able to get him to talk and get it on audio. This just shows proof of what we deal with in our police department. So when we see people of color getting handled a certain way, getting beaten, maybe even getting murdered, getting shot down, which we have a story coming up later, we're going to talk about that, for no reason. This is why, because po people that are in that power, they're not... They're not thinking right. They're not in today's times. They're stuck in a time where they think it's okay to brag and do things this man said. Yeah, this was, mm. you know, so I, I was curious about the town. So the town is 80% black. So you have a man in a position right now who's talking like that or not right now because he's no longer there. But right. you have a man who was, he was the chief of police of mm -hmm. this town mm -hmm. in a town that's 80% black. He was fired immediately, but the town had to take a vote. So the vote was three to two. And the black elderman, uh, Charles Simmons, he was a black man. Charles, so he, the alderman was a black. And anyway, he voted to keep him. And I am not sure why. Mm -hmm. So there was two votes that voted to keep him. A black man was one of the votes that voted to keep him. So I'm just a little confused after just hearing that. Um, why you would choose to have someone who who feels like this because this is not only a reflection of the one officer to me this is a reflection of the entire culture of that department Absolutely. Exactly. and so that is what we're facing right now yes Mimi I think that is an excellent point that this uh, directly reflects the department a thousand percent you know and so I saw someone on Twitter said that this is not getting national attention so happy that we get to share and not happy in a sense of you know but just uh, that we get to share stories like this because this is a story that's not getting nearly enough attention I believe and mm -hmm. so we have to use like Ben Crump has to be the person to spread this news in, in order for us to even get these news stories on our timeline but back to your point about uh, the department when we talk about George Floyd uh, George Floyd's killing at the hands of Derek Chauvin Derek Chauvin I'm um, they, call, they, they said that he was a bad apple. And so when you have these bad apples in the department, it's easy to say isolated. Like, we have this one bad apple. He's by himself. But no, that one bad apple is talking to other people. Here he is bragging to other people. So then you have other people in the department. You make them feel, well, if he can get away with it, again, like we were saying mm -hmm. earlier, so can I. And so every de police department, honestly, Romeo, back to your point, needs to be flushed out of these people. And I don't know if, I don't know if training or asking questions is going to be enough. There needs to be a real way 
to find out who are the white police officers who feel like this is okay to do this to black people. Yeah. You know, there's a word here that comes to mind, comfortable, because mm. he felt comfortable enough to yeah, say did. this in front of other people yes. and the black man who recorded it. So he, there was, this is something, this is how he, he says he doesn't use that language, but clearly you do. This is how, this is how you regularly talk. If you felt comfortable to say this in the presence of another black man, to say this in the presence of other people on the force. So this Agreed. isn't, yeah. this isn't something that just happened. This is a culture, like you said, Demi, that needs to be weeded out. There needs mm -hmm. to be ways in which that we can go back and weed out all Every of this because yeah. you cannot, and I have to say this again, you cannot be the chief of police in a town that's 80% black talking like this. No, you cannot. Uh, and, and needs, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, the man that voted for him to mm -hmm. stay, yeah. it makes you think, what do the what did he have on him mm -hmm. for him to do that, yeah. right? Because that should have been automatic, he has to go. But for him to say that, Listen. there could be something behind that. You know, we too talk about representation, about getting more black people. Or maybe you thought of, a, maybe think of another point. A black person was on the department, right? So we think that getting more black people in is going to be like, if there's a black person around he wouldn't say that but he said this with black people around so there's just like so much disrespect on so many levels yeah. that even having more black people in the department didn't even it didn't matter. save no. i mean exactly. the black man right. voted was one of the two who mm. voted for him to stay Ooh. so you know that's that's, that's another that. whole situation mm -hmm. all right the entire department in a small north carolina town is resigning after a new black town manager is hired Kinley Police Chief Josh Gibson says Justine Jones has created a hostile work environment since she's been hired. Now, Jones, who has been in her job for only a month, was hired after a nationwide search. Kinley is a town of only 2,000 people. The town is now left with only three part-time officers. No word from Jones on the resignations. A Tennessee DA is calling for state authorities to investigate the beating of a black man by police after he allegedly ran a stop sign. This is video of the incident by Oakland City Police who went into a home after following Brandon Calloway. Cops say Calloway refused to pull over after they spotted him going through the stop sign. Calloway's lawyers say he was delivering for DoorDash at the time. Calloway's girlfriend shot the video of cops tasing and beating him inside the house. After watching the video, local district attorney General Mark Davidson asked the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation to look into the police use of force. Uh, her voice, her scream, and it's giving me chills. Uh, I, everyone in the studio here is just um, at a loss for words. And so you think about another black man just trying to do his job, driving for DoorDash, and, and not to say that not pulling over for police is the right thing to do. I, I don't want to make it seem as if that's the right thing to tell our soulmates that when you're being pulled over by a police officer that you don't have to pull over. But when you think about and look at, rather, the way that this black person was treated for a a traffic stop, it honestly makes you kind of understand why I am terrified. I would be terrified. This is why I'm terrified to get pulled over because literally something like a traffic stop could land you being tased and beaten by police inside of your home while video is rolling mm. of the footage. Listen, Demi, you just, I think you just hit it on the, the, the nail yourself. He was terrified. So they, yeah. his attorneys are saying that they didn't have their lights on, so he didn't know initially that he was being pulled over. And so when he got home, he ran upstairs and he hid behind a couch because he was afraid. They came in the house, they kicked the door down, and they, they tried to tase him, and then they started beating him. So his failing to stop at a stop sign, speeding, going 32 in a 22, how many of us do rolling stops? How yeah. many of us have been speeding? The fact that they went in his house, broke the door down and started beating this man in his house is absolutely an atrocity. I mean, they don't treat dogs like that. If they treated a dog like that, 
PETA would be all over oh, this situation. You already know. They would shut it, it would down. It would be everywhere. They would shut everything down, but they would treat a black man like this. This man graduated in 2021. He was a member. He's a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, but he's also, he was a member of the National Society of Black Engineers. I mean, he is... A, a, an educated black man they see us and they just think criminal right so they think oh because he did a rolling stop or he he ran something must be wrong and so yeah. this is what we have to do this th her I, I i this story bothers me to my core i it cannot really tell does. you you know just hearing her and her scream we've heard that so many times over the last few years that we brought you the black report right so much we've done that and we've heard parents screaming crying for their loved ones because it happens over and over again this man did not shoot anybody in a grocery store this man did not walk into a, a school and kill children this man simply rolled through a stop sign which all of us are guilty of doing from time to time and for this to be the end result imagine if the videotape wasn't rolling because i really feel like most of them did not care they were so focused on taking him down all these men taking one black man down that had no weapon on him that they didn't even care she was videotaping for a minute, right? So, but we're lucky that she got that footage, but what do you have to look into? We just saw what we need to yeah. see. What do you have to, to look see. into? There's nothing else to see. And they'll be suspended and they'll probably be still getting a check yeah. while they're sitting at home. I'm with you, Romeo, happens. that they're going to investigate. We're going to look into this situation. It's like we've already saw what we need to do. The police yes. officer, even, even if the police officer getting fired, honestly, is that enough? Because there's still people, again, on this force who believe that this is okay to treat black people. And where does it end? You know, and so, if people are watching the show and you see that we, we, we're telling you the truth. If you do the research and you look, you're yeah. going to see it happening over and over again, which is why we have to bring these stories out. You know, he was charged with evading arrest, resisting and disorderly conduct, um, failing to stop at a stop sign and speeding. So those were his, his official charges. We saw what happened to the Buffalo shooter. You know, we, we have to yeah. bring this up again. You know, he we saw what happened to Dylan Roof. He was offered Burger King like we th this is absolutely insane. It really this is. This is absolutely insane. All right, police reform activists in Southern California are angry after cops shot and killed a black man who was running from them. A cop said they went to the scene after a call of, of a man with a gun in a parking lot. Video shows officers drive by in an unmarked police car. 23-year-old Rob Adams can be seen looking at the car. His lawyer says he was holding a cell phone in his hand. San Bernardino police say the officers jumped out of the car thinking Adams had a weapon. Adams can be seen running away from them and spots the un I'm sorry, the uniform cops pointing guns at him. The cops fired fatally, fatally injuring Adams. Cops say they discovered a 9mm gun on Adams. Lawyers for Adams family say they just want justice.